Welcome to another telecast of Revive America. I'm Eddie Hyatt, and I am so glad you've joined us today. Folks, Revive America is about laying uh, the biblical and historical foundation for another great spiritual awakening in our land. I'm not talking about a little meeting, series of uh, meetings in a church, although that's a good, wonderful, may God bless. But folks, we need a spiritual awakening that will go out of the churches onto the streets and through the schoolhouses and the courthouses and, and touch and change this nation at its very core and permeate every part of our society. And we have had those kind of spiritual awakenings in the past. And that is the only hope for America. Another election is not going to do it. And I do hope that every one of you will go out and vote and vote for the, uh, and vote your values. You don't have to vote a political party, vote your values. And, uh, and, and your values as a follower of Christ, vote your values. But the election itself is not going to change America. It's going to take another great spiritual awakening in response to the prayers of God's people. That's what Revive America is about. And I hope you will join me and pray and every day lift even if it's for one minute just lift up a prayer and say god send revival to america send another great spiritual awakening to our land you know the theme again today for the last two weeks and this is the third week our theme has been living by faith in god's unchanging word Folks, this is so important. The more I teach on this, the more it's down in my heart how important this is because so many followers of Jesus, so many Christians live on emotions and their feelings and they, they determine whether God is with them or not by their feelings. If they have some kind of feelings, you know, uh, good feelings and what they would call God's presence, well, then they believe God is with them. But if they feel, don't feel anything, then they wonder, is God there? My friends, God said in His Word, I will never fail you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And whether you feel anything or not, you need to base your faith on what God has said, on God's unchanging Word. This is what Phoebe Palmer called naked faith in the naked word. And we're going to be talking again about her and deriving some more very powerful biblical lessons from her life. But just before we go there, I want to mention our books. Sue and I are writers, authors, publishers. Uh, Sue is showing there. She's over in the control section. Uh, so three of my books, I've written others. I have, I, I believe, six books that are published right now. They're all on Amazon, if you want to go there on Amazon and look. But they're also all on, on my own bookstore site on my website. You see there, eddiehyatt.com. So I invite you to go to my website, and there's a lot of articles there. There are videos there, and i got some photos there of Sue and I ministering in, in different parts of the world, places like India, Sweden, Indonesia, and so on, Canada, the U.S., and uh, so anyway, check out my website. I believe it will be a blessing to you. And um, I also want to mention, here's a book I want to mention, 2,000 Years of Charismatic Christianity, my first book that I published. And God has greatly used this book to inspire, to stir people's hearts to believe Him again for revival. Because if He did it in the past, He can do it again today. And this book has been translated into several languages, used in Bible colleges, seminaries all over the world. I hope you'll avail yourself of a copy of this, published by Charisma House, available on uh, Amazon. Uh, if your bookstore, if your local bookstore doesn't have it, they can order it. Here's a book, powerful book, that has sold out. Uh, twice it has sold out, In the Spirit We're Equal, by my wife Susan. And uh, this book was, uh, was the basis also of her doctoral dissertation at uh, Regent University. Very powerful, life-changing, earth-shaking book called In the Spirit We're Equal. And uh, it is available in the Kindle format for those of you who use Kindle. Now, along with this book, uh, Sue produced a manual and a course called The Spirit, the Bible, and Women, which she has taught in the past. 
She just a few days ago asked me if I would teach this course in God's Word to Women College. And so I have very happily and excitedly accepted that invitation. And so beginning September the 16th, on each Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock, live and online, stream live, I'm going to be teaching. Sue will be helping me, uh, but uh, I'm taking the primary responsibility and teaching this course, The Spirit, the Bible, and Women. This is a life-changing course. Now, this is not just for women and about women. This is about church. This is about evangelism. This is about missions. This is about the Great Commission. This is about everybody arising up and being the person God has called you to be and fulfilling His purpose for your life, regardless of your gender. So you don't want to miss this. Now, there's an email there that you can write and you can register. There's no charge, but if you will register, we just like to know that you are there and you will benefit by receiving any updates and any notes or handouts that are sent out. You will automatically receive them by registering and having your name put on the list. So, so if you have any interest at all, send an email, do it now, and uh, let us know that you want to be uh, a student in uh, this GWTW college and this course that I am going to be teaching. Now, we're going to talk some more today about some principles that took this woman out of the kitchen as a housewife and took her out to be one of the most successful evangelists and revivalists the church has ever known. And I may reiterate some things we said in the last two sessions, the last two telecasts, but folks, I have shared some, some truths that if you get a hold of these, you'll, they'll change your life. And one of these was what you see on the screen. She learned to live by naked faith and the naked word. Or as I said in the beginning, our theme, learning to live by God's unchanging word. Naked faith and the naked word is how Phoebe Palmer expressed it. Naked faith means there, there is no feeling to buttress the faith. There is no feeling to clothe it and to, 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 to help it and encourage it. Nothing. In the naked word, naked faith in the naked word. Have you ever been there? You had no feelings, you had no nothing. You had nothing to go on but God's word. Sometimes people refuse to live that way. Folks, you have to live that way if you're going to be a successful follower of Jesus. You've got to build on God's word, not on feelings. If you build on feelings and impressions, your life will be up and it will be down. It will be up and it will be down. But if you will build your life on God's unchanging word, then let the feelings take care of themselves. Then you can live on a more steady plane because God's word is the same every day. And I will here insert a little quote that I shared in the last telecast from Martin Luther. Feelings come and feelings go, but feelings are deceiving. My friends, your feelings are unreliable. I'm going to say that again. Your feelings and your emotions are unreliable. Do not make decisions. Do not build your life on feelings and impressions and emotions. Because feelings come and feelings go, but feelings are deceiving. I'll put my trust in the Word of God. Naught else is worth believing. Oh, that is so true. And so Phoebe Palmer came to this way of faith, naked faith in the naked Word. Yes, there, were, there came a time where she felt God's presence and power, but she had learned not to live by that. She had learned to live by God's Word. And as I shared in the last telecast, it was when she was seeking for a, an experience of what the Methodists in her day called sanctification. They actually, they later called it actually the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and the criteria for knowing if she had experienced this sanctification, which it was taught would, would give you the ability to live an overcoming life, to conquer sin and live an overcoming life. 
And uh, what was taught primarily at the time when she was first seeking this experience was that you would know you had experienced this. You would just know that you know because you would have some kind of experience. One person might say, well, I had goosebumps run up and down my back and I knew I had, God had sanctified me and cleansed me of original sin and given me the power to live an overcoming life. Another might say, well, you know, I saw a bright light shine out, flash out of heaven and I knew I had been sanctified. Another person might say, you know, I felt God's power and I fell over on the floor and I lay there for an hour and when I got up, I knew the work was done. And Phoebe said as much as she prayed and sought God and wanted to have some kind of subjective experience like that, she said, I never had any kind of experience, never had any kind of great feelings or anything. And it so concerned her, she said, I wept because I could not weep. I wept because I didn't have any feelings. And that's when she decided she was putting too much stock in her own feelings and that she needed to step out and dare to take God at His word and to put her naked faith in the naked word of God. And that was when her life became transformed. And as I shared in, the, in, in, in last week's telecast, it began with the passage that is found there uh, on the scripture in Matthew chapter 23, verse 29. And this became known as the altar terminology in her preaching. In her praying and seeking, she was also reading the Bible. And she read Matthew 23, 19, where Jesus said, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift? She knew that in Scripture the altar was a place of consecration. When you put something on the altar, it was given over completely to God. It was given as a gift to God, completely His. The giver's hands were off, and it was completely, unreservedly God's. A place of consecration. And so right there... She read that it is the altar that sanctifies the gift. And so she decided, God, I'm going to give my life as a gift to you. No strings attached. God, from this time forth, I'm consecrating myself. I am giving myself completely, unreservedly, no strings attached to you. Lord, from this day forth, I belong. I am, I am totally, absolutely, unequivocally yours. I belong to you. And as I shared last time, that was the point where she said she experienced a deep abiding peace that she had not known before, and she concluded that God had honored her faith. And so she began to teach this. Her sister had started a weekly prayer meeting and gathering, and, uh, and after a while, Phoebe she turned it over to Phoebe and Phoebe began to have this meeting in her home and she began to teach what God had taught her. And she called it the Tuesday meeting for the promotion of holiness. Now her husband was a medical doctor, a successful medical doctor in New York City, quite affluent, well-to-do, and they had a large home. But her teachings, after giving herself over to God like that. It was like all of a sudden her words came forth in ways they hadn't come forth before. Her testimony was so powerful. And in a very short time, 200 people and more were crowding into her parlor, listening to her to preach about what she called the way to holiness. <laughs> in other words, the way to a victorious life. And Phoebe said, it's my putting your life on the altar. It's by consecrating yourself, giving yourself over completely to God with no strings attached. From that time forth, you don't belong to any person anymore. You belong to God. And she said, when you do that, you are to believe from that time forth that God has come into your life in His sanctifying power and giving you the ability and power to live a victorious, overcoming life. You are to believe that by faith, whether you feel anything or not, because God's Word says that is, is, is the altar. Jesus said it's the altar. It's the place of consecration that sanctifies the gift, and the gift is your life that you give to God. And she began to teach this. And people begin to come. 
And people were having powerful, life-transforming experiences. And even church leaders began to come. <laughs> Four different Methodist bishops began to regularly attend her Tuesday meeting in her home. Four Methodist bishops were there every week listening to her and what she was teaching. Other church leaders from other denominations began to come and, and, and lives being powerfully touched by God. I know of one, a man named Charles Cullis, who was a, uh, a medical doctor in Boston, which is about 200 miles from uh, New York City. I know because Sue and I used to live about 50 miles south of Boston and 150 miles north of New York City. And uh, we were on the faculty and staff at Zion Bible College back in the 1990s. Wonderful school uh, that has since moved their campus. But uh, he traveled down to New York City to be in her meetings. He heard about them. He was a medical doctor, but, but, but was, was hungry to know God in a, in a more real way. And he accepted the teaching about this shorter way to holiness, and he laid his life on the altar. And he went back to Boston. And he had this experience and this insight that he believed that if God could come in and sanctify a person's soul and cleanse them from the power of sin, then that same God could also cleanse the body from the effects of sin, which was sickness. Now, remember, he was a medical doctor. And no one was teaching this at the time. And so one day, these ideas were coming to him, no doubt by the Spirit of God. And he was studying the Scriptures. And one day, there was a woman under his medical care, and he decided to anoint her with oil and pray for her, and lo and behold, she was miraculously healed. <laughs> and Charles Cullis began to have what he called faith conventions in the Northeast, especially in Old or Orchard Beach, Maine, with thousands of people attending and people's lives being transformed. So you can see just a little bit of the far-reaching effects of Phoebe Palmer putting her life on the altar. Oh, my friends, and I, I want to call everybody under the sound of my voice. We may, have, we may need to do this more than one time in our life. We read in the Old Testament, the old patriarchs, at different times they would build an altar to God. And sometimes we may have to come back again and say, God, I, I, I need to renew my consecration. And I'm going to call on everybody watching me. I hope, you, you know, even here while you're listening, I know God is speaking. You say, God, I want to give myself to you. I remember, I remember doing that one time. Some of you will know what I'm talking about, at the Church of God in Powderly, Texas. This is many years ago. I was in my 20s. It was before my good friend, Brother Bill Jordan, who's gone on to be with the Lord, uh, came in and pastored that church for many years. And I think Mark, Turner is the pa Mark Sanders is the pastor there now. But I remember one night I was struggling with, 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 with my music. I love to play music. And after I got saved and gave my life to the Lord, I, I put aside the secular music and so on, but I was being pulled and drawn back into it. And it could very easily become an idol in my life and draw me away from God. And I'll never forget in that little church of God there in Powderly, Texas, and I don't even remember the, the pastor's name, the preacher's name, but I remember I went down to the front. I was struggling with this. And I went down to the front and I made an altar of faith. And I said, God, God, I'm giving my all to you. Everything is yours. My music, my life, my everything. Lord, from this day forth, I am giving it all to you. In other words, I laid my life on the altar. Hallelujah. I totally consecrated myself to him. And folks, I want to tell you, I did have an experience. <laughs> it was a greater experience than I had, and I don't remember if I had yet been baptized in the Holy Spirit. I don't remember the time sequence. But here's what I remember. After doing that that night, and it wasn't even a great meeting, 
There were only a handful of people there, maybe five or six people from what I remember. But my friends, you can build an altar to God anywhere. Doesn't have to be in a big church gathering, a big meeting. Doesn't have to be, you know, some boisterous, loud meeting. It can be. Doesn't have to be. It can be anywhere. Be right there in your home. My brother-in-law, as a young man, was riding his motorcycle. God was dealing with him so powerfully, he turned off to the side of the road, got off his motorcycle by the side of the road, and knelt down and made an altar of faith there and gave himself to God through Jesus. Still serving to God here 35, 40 years later. Hallelujah. Well, Phoebe's life was never the same when she gave herself to God. My folks, folks, this is what's going to bring revival in America. When people move beyond just being church members and practicing a comfort, convenient Christianity and give ourselves completely, unreservedly to Him. Well, Phoebe began to get invitations. Now, it was challenging because remember, there were not women preachers in the early, mid-1800s. In fact, it was controversial. Charles Finney, who was a contemporary, tells in his writings how he ran into controversy simply by asking women to pray in public. He was attacked by other preachers who said to him, we have to nip this in the bud. If we let them pray in public, the next thing you know, they'll want to preach in public. And so it was a big thing. But obviously God was blessing. God was touching, changing people's lives through her teaching, through her ministry. And so she got invitations to speak in other places, and so she went out. But she would not admit that she was preaching and teaching. She was, but she wouldn't admit it to try to deflect some of the criticism that was already coming her way. In the advertisement, it would say, Phoebe Palmer will be giving a talk <laughs> at certain, certain places. My friend, however you got to do it, go ahead and do it. If God's called you, you go ahead and do it. Do it however you've got to do it. And so, but in her talks, the presence of God was coming. Entire congregations breaking down and weeping before God <laughs> as she called them to the way of holiness and to give themselves completely to God. So many invitations began to come that her doctor husband finally closed down his practice and begin traveling with her, carrying her suitcases and helping look after some of the mundane and administrative issues that come forth in a traveling ministry like that. And they traveled throughout the northeastern part of the United States, traveled into Canada, into Ontario, and across into New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, traveled over the ocean in a Ocean Liner spent four years in the British Isles. And let me just read to you some of the quotes from her book that's sitting here on my desk called Four Years in the Old World. And this is an old book published in 1865. But she talks about some of the meetings in England where she is speaking, where she is giving her talks, actually preaching and teaching God's Word. And she said, she wrote from Sunderland, England. She said, there is such a sense of the divine presence that people are weeping all over the house. Oh, I pray that in our churches in America. And by the way, she didn't have a worship team. She didn't have a praise band. They just sang some simple hymns without any music. Now, I am not in any way detracting from those things, but sometimes we put our faith in this modern church world. 
there is a tendency for us to put our faith in all of the paraphernalia that we use in worship and we actually get distracted from putting our naked faith in the naked Word of God and trusting God Himself for what needs to be done. Consecration. She says there is such a sense of the divine presence. And it wasn't because there were any cheerleaders. She had just called people. She had just taught people this way to holiness and called them to give their lives completely to God. And as people were doing it, she says there is such a sense of the divine presence and people are weeping all over the house. My friend, have you given yourself completely to God? You may have gone to church. You may have joined the church. You may have shaken the preacher's hand. You may have even knelt and prayed. You may have joined the church. But have you really consecrated and given yourself, laid yourself on the altar and say, God, here I am. I am totally, completely yours. From Newcastle, England, she wrote that the power of God is sensibly felt to be present to heal. Now, why is this happening? It's happening simply by her sharing her experience and what God taught her about naked faith and the naked word and putting your faith in God's unchanging word and giving yourself, putting yourself on the altar of God, consecrating oneself completely to Him. And as a result, as people are doing this, God's presence is coming in great power. I don't think I finished when I was telling you that night in that little church of God, about five or six people there, and I went forward. And it wasn't a call to that at that time. It was just out of the struggle of my own soul. I gave myself completely to God. I said, God, I'm giving you myself right now. My struggles, my music, everything, it belongs to you. God, I will, anything that I do, I will do it for your glory. My friends, I had never experienced anything like that. Never experienced anything just like that since. I've had experiences, God's power, and God's blessings. But let me tell you, it was like for three days... I did not even experience anything like that when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. It seemed for three days that my feet weren't touching the floor. I was filled with such joy and such a sense of God's presence. I can still remember, and this has been, you know, over 40 years ago. I can remember driving along in my car and, 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 and there in Lamar County, and so full of the joy of the Lord that alone in my car, shouting at the top of my voice because I was so full of the joy of the Lord that had come after I had consecrated myself and said, God, I'm putting my life on the altar, all that I am and all that I have from this time forth is yours. Well. Wow. Folks, this is the answer, this is the key for revival in the churches of America. We don't need a better cheerleader. All we need a new consecration. We don't need a better program. <laughs> All we need a new consecration of our lives pastors, members, Sunday school teachers, everybody, a new consecration and giving ourselves over to God. As the old hymn says, all to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I surrender all. Lord, I thank you for my brother and my sister watching me tonight or today, whatever it might be. And I thank you, Lord, as they are now giving themselves over to you, putting themselves on the altar. I thank you, Lord, for visiting them in great power, touching their lives, meeting their needs for your glory and honor in Jesus' name. I'm Eddie Hyatt. So glad you were with me today, and I look forward to seeing you next week on another telecast of Revive America. <laughs>